Thanks once again for dropping by the channel. If you like the content, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, share the video if you enjoyed, if you felt it was useful. Now let's get into this. So as most people would know, Chris Eubank Jr. has been in camp with Roy Jones uh, as of late. Now, Eubank Jr. is not uncommon because he's gone through plenty of trainers over the last couple of years. But with Roy Jones, we're seeing a few clips of him, Eubank Jr. on the pads. And there was a sparring session that Eubank Jr. uploaded to his Instagram page in which Roy Jones has him sparring. He has him just exclusively using his left hand. And to be honest with you, uh, apart from a few little moments where Eubank Jr. kind of lost his feet, lost his balance, I thought he looked pretty good. You know, it definitely looks like Roy Jones is maybe a good fit for Eubank Jr. Now, Roy Jones has been doing corner for a couple of fighters over the last few years. Most noticeably, I remember he was in the corner for Isaac Chalemba. Uh, for one of, I guess he was in the corner for Chalemba for a couple of Chalemba's fights. But Chalemba was really a fringe contender in the light heavyweight division. Eubank Jr., world level world level world level middleweight slash super middleweight um definitely think he's better at middleweight roy jones with eubank jr now, roy jones as we've as i've said many times as we most of us know was a fighter who in his prime was a freak of nature and roy jones really did rely a lot on his athleticism you know that was what made roy jones roy jones in his prime you know he was an athletic freak he would out athleticize you as i said in my what was it, the career review, it wasn't so much as Roy Jones would outbox you, he would just out athleticize you. So you could be a better boxer, but the athleticism of speed of Roy Jones would just counteract all your boxing ability. So, obviously Eubank Jr. is not on the level, not even close to the athleticism of Roy Jones had. But Roy, but Jr., I should say, Eubank Jr. is very athletic. You know, he is very athletically gifted. And what I like Roy Jones doing is, is he's getting him to exclusively use his left hand. And obviously his left hand is his jab hand. And one thing Eubank Jr. has been criticised over the years for is not having a particularly good jab. So we're seeing him in that sparring foot jab a little bit more. And the uppercuts he's throwing, they're still hard, they're still thunderous. But I like the fact that Eubank Jr. is jab. I like the fact he's relying on his left hand a bit more. You know, to me, with Eubank Jr., you don't, you don't even need... Eubank Jr. to know to be able to you know box to a perfect tee or to be kind of like an Andre Ward when it comes to the box. You don't need that, but you need Jr. to be able to apply pressure on the front foot and if he gets into a jab match, at least be able to hold his own. You can jab with a jabber, you know. And Eubank Jr.'s hooks and uppercuts are so good that he's fine when it comes to kind of inside fighting with hooks and stuff like that because he's very good. But you need better long range boxing for Eubank Jr. Definitely, you need to improve his front foot coming forward his front foot game because it's a bit sloppy but improving his jab first and foremost because as they say you can jab with a jabber there are plenty of fighters who Deontay Wilder against Tyson Fury in the first fight is a very good example where Fury's jab, Fury has a very good jab but Wilder was able to jab with him because you can jab with a jabber so if Roy Jones can get Eubank Jr. using his jab but to be honest jab, once boxing resumes it'll be interesting to see who Eubank Jr. fights next and if he has Roy Jones in his corner because I'd definitely be looking forward to seeing the improvements that would be there now it, it depends on who it's going to be you know we've heard talk after Karabov that it'd be Charlo I mean I'd be picking Charlo to win that fight regardless of who's in Eubank Jr's corner but I would I almost wouldn't mind seeing Eubank Jr in there with someone who's maybe you know not at that level you know of a Charlo or someone that's some kind of fringe contender just so we can see if then ideally someone who can box a bit just so we can see the improvements that Eubank Jr. has, or if indeed he has made any improvements, work on Roy Jones. It may be interesting, very interesting. But this is something I'm going to be keeping my eye on because Eubank Jr., he's been in the Mayweather camp, he's been with Virgil Hunter, he's been, who else has he been with? He's been with Adam Boot, he's been with a few guys, but he's never stuck there. And, you know, there, there could be several reasons for that. Eubank Jr., we, I think it was Adam Boot who said that he just couldn't, he couldn't take it. I think, was it, was it Adam Boot as well? Yeah, he said that he just couldn't, just the discipline of Eubank Jr. He wouldn't listen stuff like that. But that was a younger Eubank Jr. who I don't want to say he was kind of brought down to earth by George Groves but I definitely think George Groves really did knock a little bit of sense into Eubank Jr. So maybe Eubank Jr. is listening a bit more and someone like Roy Jones who is respected you know I think most people respect Roy Jones he's you know a very good analyst you know when he was doing work for HBO and most people would watch Roy Jones as highlights. Most people would have loved Eubank Jr. I'm sure would have watched a lot of Roy Jones, you know, when he was up and coming. So maybe someone like Roy Jones, Eubank Jr. would respect Roy Jones, respect his opinion, and maybe he'd listen to him. So it'll be interesting to see 
who he fights next and if he has Roy Jones in his corner. It'd be also interesting to see if he puts up any more you know, sparring footage so we can see a few more improvements there, if indeed any. So those are my thoughts on this, let me know. And I have to say one thing, we, the sparring partner looked like he was getting a bit of a beating in there. We don't know who the sparring partner was, to be fair, because they had a full face protect your head guard on. So it could be just some, you know, no hoper, you know. Obviously not someone who just wrapped off the street, but you know, someone who's probably not that good, just maybe in the camp just to take a few punches. So, you know, that has to be said. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, of course, if you are new. And as always, I will talk. So before I go, I just want to say thank you for dropping by the channel. I really do appreciate it. I mean, all the support, all the things that have happened on this channel over the last year have been incredible. If you're new to the channel, as you'll see on screen there, there's a couple of like older videos that I have. Some of them aren't really relevant now, to be fair, but some of them are, like my Fighters With A Problem series, stuff like that. If you like any of this, please subscribe. Like the video you just watched, share it, do it all you gotta do. Let's try and keep this channel going because I love doing this and I love interacting with the fans and I love hoping, hopefully, the fans love watching my videos. So, thank you for dropping by. I've been G-Man. I will talk to you.